So another video to show what I've been working on the past day. I want to add a generic servo. That's why I've been breaking out these BMX models. So I'm going to create one here. And the idea would be this is a single servo. And, you know, without knowing how to represent it, I got the idea that I would let let the user import object files. So I've got a couple of meshes that can be imported. So this one's a static mesh. It's optional, but if you import it, it's not going to move. It's just going to be there to represent. So I found a I found a Santa Claus object file and I brought that in and I went in SketchUp and took one of his arms off. And so then I can come in here and you could you can position this and scale it with, with these properties here. Like if I wanted to offset it in the X direction, you can like translate it around, rotate it, scale it. So now I'm gonna to go to the motion mesh and I'm gonna bring in the arm object file. Now the reason it's way over there is because I've got this on translate X. So so what this field's doing is telling the program which which way do you want the servo to move this object? Do you want it to translate in the X, Y, or Z, or rotate around one of the axes? So since I want to make this kind of wave, it'll be rotating around this blue Z axis. So I'm going to say rotate around Z. And I'm going to offset Y, type 45, bring it up. And X, I think I've already done this, practiced it, so I know it's about 9.5, puts it about there. Let's see, let me bring it in a little bit more. It's jumping around because it's actually trying to process the values. I, I might try to see if I can get it to not do that while you're in the modeling mode. Um, range of motion. That's going to be how far it moves. So I'm going to say 40 degrees. Yeah. We'll just see how that looks. I'll hit save. So I'm going to create a sequence. Pull this out over here, make it a little larger. And zoom in where we can see what's happening. Okay, so I'm going to drop a servo effect. So this is set to work with a 16-bit servo. So now, as I move that servo, you can see it's moving that arm. So if I went back into layout and told it, well, instead of rotating around Z, let's say it's doing an X translation, you can see now as I move it, it would be translating it in the X direction. So you could pretty much kind of dial in these numbers to make, make the, the object look like whatever kind of animatronic object you had in your yard and what kind of motion it's doing. So let me drop another one down. I um, also first started with a with a kind of like a moving head. So the static part. Let's see. So I've got a moving head here. I'm going to bring in the yoke. It's just going to look kind of like a moving head base. And then for the <coughs> motion piece, I'm going to bring in the head. Again, that's translated X. I'm going to rotate this around the x-axis. So I need to offset this in y. So I can bring it up. Now it looks 
fairly good right there. I'm going to leave that range of motion at 180 so it can should be able to flip back and forth. So now if we go back to sequencer, add that guy to our grid, drop down a servo effect. And let's go find our moving head over here. I'll rotate around where we can see it. So now as I rotate that moving head, you can see it goes from plus or minus 90 because uh, it's going to start wherever the object comes in at its, you know, zero rotation is going to be the default and then it's going to go plus or minus half of the range of motion. So if I went back to layout, I could tell it, oh, this guy actually can move 360 degrees. These aren't always degrees either. If it's it's a translation, it's not degrees. It's just like units of measure. I'll go back and reprocess this. So now you can see it's pointing straight down and it does a full 360. So I'm going to do some more testing and further refine this, but it's looking like you know I might be able to allow allow the user to specify their own object files to represent you know an animatronics object. And you know next I'll I'll probably add a maybe a two or a three probably just add a three axis servo, and then you could define you know different object files that that can rotate on each one. Of those that servo axes and <clears throat> that gets a little, a little more complicated because then you probably have to tie some together because you might have like this yoke might move on one axis and when it moves it's going to move that object as well so you'd have to link one object to the other to have them move together but right now I'm just starting out with a single servo object that moves moves like one one motor in one direction Anyways, that's what I've worked on the past couple of days, and just wanted to show that off because I thought it was kind of cool. Talk to you later.